Okay, we have the Kennedy Class 3 design worksheet. And uh, we're going to go over the steps of design uh, kind of briefly without any kind of uh, clinical instructions. Uh, we're assuming all the undercuts are in the classic positions here. And our step one, once again, is to outline the edentulous area and adhere those prosthetic teeth to the denture base and then acrylic denture base to the metal framework with this mesh lattice retention. Um, the rules for class three, or kind of loose rules, are clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area. And we know that this abutment here would be one four and one seven. And we can obviously measure with our surveyors where the undercut exists. And we're going to have the opposing dentition uh, really confirming where we're going to put these uh, direct retainers on the second quadrant. And those uh, abutment teeth could be the four, the five, the six, or the seven. Uh, I mean, classic in the marketplace would be to embrasure clasp uh, five and six, and then have this kind of three point rest position. Uh, maybe we can do that in pencil. Uh, you know what, I'll do that in pen maybe. Over the top, we would have the embrasure clasp classically in the marketplace. Uh, what we're gonna do with our rules of design, if we can, is put one clasp anterior as possible, one posterior as possible, to, to split apart that embrasure clasp, And then uh, step four would be an auxiliary rest. There's no um, free end, there's no tissue support, there's no indirect retention needed. So we're just going to connect the palatal strap major connector, three to five millimeters for the legions of a margin. Now, when we talk about statics of a partial denture, here we have the palatal strap with four rest points keeping this obviously a tooth borne partial but more stable if you see this trapezoid of four uh, contact points uh, unlike if we were to do the embrasure clasp which would be this kind of triangle or let's say tripod of three point static contact these rest points uh, naturally the shaded area in the triangle is a lot less palatal support or vertical support versus the trapezoid four points if you could use the analogy that the tripod is less stable than the four-legged chair. Um, I think um, we can all probably agree just visually that the four rest points is a lot more stable, a lot more predictable, especially if I'm thinking about the future tooth loss, most likely will be tooth number one seven being a standalone um, tooth in the dentition without any antagonistic teeth, mesial or distal limit. If we were to do that, then we're into a classic class two situation. And then now we incorporate a fulcrum line and lo and behold, we have our indirect retainer here already in place. If we didn't have this design and we relied on the embrasure clasp, we would have probably, if we were thinking of losing this tooth, go back up here and apron the canines uh, for a future free end situation. So there's our first uh, class three design. And now we're gonna do the uh, unilateral uh, edentulous space class three. This is Kennedy class three we're talking about. On the lower, outline the edentulous areas, clasp the teeth adjacent to this edentulous area in the simplest form possible. Obviously keeping undercut and aesthetics and function, everything in mind. This is in the aesthetic zone, we'll put some kind of bar clasp. Now, again, on the opposing side, there's no modification here at all whatsoever. So if we can, we'll try to move one as anterior as possible and one as posterior as possible. And then step three would be auxiliary rests. There is no free end here. We don't need any. And then the Kennedy uh, lingual bar, step four, major connector. of our class four. Oh, 
<laughs> step four, not class four, major connector lingual bar. Now this is assuming that we have the lingual sulcus depth, you know, we can move up to a embrasure clasp. Again, if we lose this one uh, in the future, then now we have our fulcrum line, which exists, and lo and behold, we now have indirect retention in advance. If this one has a poor prognosis and you want more indirect retention, I guess we could plate this. I think we could go all the way around, maybe a minor connector and make a Kennedy bar, or we could even apron the anterior. Each of these major connector designs has its own caveat of tissue compression or uh, or uh, patient acceptance with the uh, metal here. Obviously, uh, vertical dimension is an issue as we've talked in future uh, Kennedy class one and two. We move on to another exercise here with now we're incorporating a modification into our Kennedy class. Outline the edentulous areas first. Now I'm just doing cavalierly mesh retention that we're gonna have an acrylic denture base. I have no idea on the vertical dimension of occlusion of the opposing dentition, if it even uh, comes close to the tissue height here, whether we need opposing denture extractions or we're gonna have metal uh, pontics here, occlusion or facings or and or metal denture base. Clasp the teeth adjacent to the dentulous areas are my abutment teeth. If these abutment teeth are guarded or poor prognosis, then maybe they need restorative and or extractions or consideration of something before any partial denture treatment uh, would exist. Uh, to do it afterward would be kind of iatrogenic to the client. To do this afterwards would be, as we said, Again, try to stay symmetrical. Uh, if we're having a hard time uh, having some symmetry, you can always kind of faintly draw the midline here. If your drawing is really sloppy, then try to, you know, maybe a little X terminating the end of the clasp in the undercut, maybe illustrating that. If you wish, you can shade it in. Again, these can be uh, eye bars, they could be roach clasps, they could be rot wire clasps in the anterior section, depending on the undercut and the aesthetic zone. We'll move to the mandible. Outline the edentulous area taking place here. And here's one tooth. So one tooth we can do, um, maybe mesh and post, but we're gonna bring the finishing line to the back. Two teeth here will leave a mesh denture, uh, a mesh, a mesh uh, acrylic denture base, or maybe, uh, maybe less confusing to say that the finishing line stops here and then we're gonna have an acrylic denture base incorporating all around this mesh retention. You see some people bringing this all the way to the back like here. Maybe a rule of thumb would be if one tooth is missing, we can bring the um, uh, major connector or external finishing line back. If there's more than one tooth, maybe a better idea to keep it all in acrylic because underneath here, under the bar, you know there's about 0.3 millimeters of space that's going to entrap more food particles, etc. and then clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area in the simplest, this pencil needs a little bit of work. the teeth adjacent to the dentulous area. Now whether these are bar clasps or wire clasps, I think the only time to bring a, uh, to bring a, gar, a bar clasp from a single tooth would be very difficult aesthetically to uh, create a good aesthetics for this single tooth with a bar clasp. Um, I've seen many times they'll just omit this and go with three clasps, you know, for the aesthetic. But again, this is uh, academics, I'm not having any idea if the patient's acceptance uh, will be uh, positive or negative, really. 
So we're practicing our drawing of our major connectors and our frameworks. There is no prosthetic teeth here. This is the base framework for the removable bridge or cast chromium partial denture technology here. Right? I mean, drawing is one thing, making it is another. Again, if you want to plate the canine, that's wood. If you want auxiliary rests, go ahead, but this would be basic. If you've got some prognosis here that's poor in the posterior and you want more something up in the anterior, that's fine. Let's move on to drawing number five here in the class three, modification two now, major connector. We'll do single teeth here. Now you see we have this intermediate peer abutment in the class three, which is a tooth borne partial. There's no rotation. If the prognosis is poor on tooth one seven, then possibly treat it as the free end where there is nothing to go on and, and do the abutment teeth adjacent to that peer standing or freestanding bicuspid. Uh, I think it would be prudent if in this case, you could put a couple of rests. Uh, you could even, again, let's work on this side here where we're going to clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area. On this side, it's really straightforward. And we'll put some acres clasp. Now these could be ring clasps and back action and all that stuff, but G clasp, but we'll keep it really basic. And this would be the most uh, you know popular clasping. Now here, uh, obviously this is not a very strong tooth due to the losing its antagonistic mesodistal adjacent teeth. So we have theoretically more bone loss around this tooth. So we wanna like maintain the integrity of this tooth. So plating it may not be an issue, maybe a window around it. If you wish to put a clasp, you can, but let's just un all understand and agree that the prognosis of tooth 2.5 is very poor. But we could clasp it in this situation uh, but it would have to be a mesial and distal rest because you need to have a rest adjacent to the modification. So here we've got guide planes one, two, three, four, five, six. These guide planes must be closed off. Whether this is mesh and post on this side, indifferent. Again, keep a symmetrical. And here we have our palatal strap, major connector. Again, if you want a faint line down the middle for some symmetry, that's fine. Uh, a window here, I think, would be prudent for self-cleansing to stop getting any kind of food entrapment where the bone loss occurs around the single pier abutment. But you'll see many dentists, they'll probably just plate the whole thing and have it ready for... Uh, but even if it's extraction, then this uh, three to five millimeter uh, palatal design around it off here acts as a finishing line. Now you're back into this situation. If you look at this drawing and this one, the only difference is that bicuspid. So an easy addition. We move to the mandible with the anterior section missing. Whether you go back for one tooth or straight down and have acrylic, I think the difference is what the prognosis of this seven is. And let's say it's poor. So then we're gonna go in with our mesh retention here in acrylic denture base. Here in the anterior, we're gonna have mesh. We have mesh and posts. Obviously the posts would need like an index of a setup to see where our denture teeth kind of lie. Uh, so we can get these posts aligned correctly with the right midline and the right labial inclination. Clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulary area with the simplest form possible. In the anterior modification, we need to have a minimum of a mesial lingual rest or a cingulum or an apron in the anterior, closing off these guide planes here and here. That is a rule of design. Now we have no modification on this posterior side. So we can do the embrasure clasp or as in our notebook, one anterior is possible, one posterior is possible, trying to enhance the stability of this major connector or the stability of this partial denture. Well, let's apron the canines then. Uh, maybe I'll apron these two, maybe I'll come down, I'll apron the canine. If I didn't, I could come here and single them rest back. Either way is fine. But I think it's important here to notice that there is a window or of this minor connector that comes down three to five millimeters and I'll... Now, if this is a long span anterior four teeth, then I guess you could interrupt the lingual bar, create a strengthener here. So now you have 
interrupted lingual bar, so it'd be like two major connectors, and then this anterior segment may be, you know, acrylic. I mean, the advantage of this is that you have less food entrapment up at the anterior section, creating more mechanical retention for the prosthetic T32314142. At this, the caveat of this, though, is that you best have some strengtheners or an additional strengthener to your mesh. So through processing or patient wear, there's no bending through the midline of this partial denture uh, left and right. We're going to go on to hear the modification in the anterior of the Kennedy Class 3 maxillary, modification 2, mesh retention, acrylic denture base. Let's sharpen this pencil. Mesh retention. I'm going to come down here. Teeth adjacent to the edentulous area are my direct retainers, step two. Don't forget what we're doing here. Anterior modification, we need to rest on both sides. Clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area. That was the posterior edentulous area, that is. So we have these sevens. Uh, oh, let's just do ring clasp all the way around to the buckle. Hopefully there's no cheek impingement. But let's just say that they're flared out buckly. We got some ring clasp, step three auxiliary rests. Acres would have been fine there too. Now, since there's only three teeth up here, I might leave them all plated, but it's important. Let's step all the way back here. Remember the width of the major connector is the posterior occlusion being replaced. And here we have our closed oval major connector. Probably preparing ourselves for a class one situation with these two teeth extracted in the future. If you want to come down here and leave a window, that's fine as well. Last one seems a little complicated. Kennedy class three modification one, two, three, four, five. Ouch. With two intermediate abutments. Outline the edentulous areas first. Let's not get. These are basically the gingival margins of the prosthetic teeth. Mesh and posts, metal denture base, metal backing, any type of retention that is necessary due to the occlusion. and the dental technology being performed here. So we'll do all acrylic with posts, okay? I was just drawing them differently. So now, clasp the teeth adjacent to the edentulous area and the back. So I think we can all agree that sevens, let's get that out of the way, would be pretty easy. This is a class three tooth born partial. Theoretically, no rotations will exist, but I think we should try to skip these pier abutments with clasps and move up in the anterior section would be probably be more prudent. This is an anterior modification anyways, so we need to have some form of clasping on 3.3 and 4.3. If you wish, you could put clasp on here as well. It's not necessary, but definitely in front of it. We're going to come down and stay off the lingual gingival margin of these pier abutments. Uh, we have an anterior modification here which we'd have at least a minimum of a distal lingual rest or cingulum rest and or plating since we have the other canines plated. And then now we're gonna connect the dots. Connect the dots. It's really not the right term. <laughs> um, continue on and finish my major connector lingual bar. I'll color it in so you can kind of visualize where it is. We've got apron on the three. We got, oh, we're going to apron these two because there's just two left. We've got apron on the canine. And we've got windows here. Now, whether we put clasps on here or here, either is correct or not. Probably sometimes the clasp is put on to stabilize uh, these teeth rather than being jostled around with you know, guide plane. So this is really fixed. There's a lot of hardware for one, two, three, four, five, six teeth, but nevertheless, there's the ideas of Kennedy class three design worksheet three.